we're going to now move into the central object, one of the very central objects in probability theory, okay. So, we discussed experiment, we discussed outcome. So, those are sort of like the physical things that happen, right. And then we talked about sample space, which is a mathematical object, okay. The first mathematical object in the theory sort of is the sample space, which is a set of outcomes in the experiment. And uh, we also saw that even though it's an important theoretical notion, we're not going to use it that much in problem solving, but still it's, it's, it's an important notion. This event is a very, very, very central notion. So, you have to be very, very comfortable with events and manipulating them, using them, thinking of them, understanding them, etc., etc. If you have to be, if, you, if you're going to be good at, you know, working in probability and statistics. So, event is a very, very important notion. Uh, it's, uh, you, know, you know, to give a precise definition, uh, it's surprising, you know, it's very surprising that in, in theory you, you build up the theory and the third definition you make or the second definition you make, I have to put a technical caveat, okay. So, you see in the definition I've said an event is a subset of the sample space. That seems easy enough, you know, you know subsets or at least we think we know subsets, okay. So, you have a set which is a sample space, is a collection of all outcomes and then you think of a subset of that sample space. Uh, so, it turns out this is uh, not entirely a correct definition because uh, there is a technical restriction on what subsets can be events. It turns out in probability theory, you do not want to count every subset as an event. So, this will not uh, impact most of our calculations, okay. So, it shows up only in some special cases. Uh, so, for now, I am going to ignore this restriction. Your book also does the same thing, they ignore this restriction for now and continue to do the calculations and nothing much will affect you and later on we will point out uh, when that becomes uh, necessary, okay. So, if you want an analogy I will in from physics I will tell you. So, you, you learn about Newton's laws and uh, Newton's uh, theory of gravity and all that and then, then you see in some special situation it does not really work, it needs a correction, right. So, like for instance very heavy objects like black holes or very high speeds close to the speed of light, you know Newton's theory does not quite work. So, what do you do for that? You correct it with some general theory of relativity or something, something that Einstein did, you, you bring in and you correct it. So, this is sort of like that, okay. So, just saying event is a subset of the sample space, for most practical purposes it is going to be okay. But there is one more sort of case within the practical purposes which will show up and there you cannot really do this very easily, so, okay. So, so we will point it out later on, so do not bother about it too much. For now, we will simply take the definition to be event is a subset of the sample space, okay. So, that is very good. So, now let us start looking at examples, right. So, we saw the definition, let us start looking at examples. So, the first example that we saw was from the tossing a coin experiment. We know the sample space here, heads comma tails. Uh, there are only four events here, right. So, and all four are fine, you can take uh, all four to be possible events here. Uh, you have the empty set, Notice the empty set is an event, right? So, why is that? Because the empty set is a subset of any set, okay? So, the empty set is an event. So, an empty set is something like nothing happened, okay? You toss a coin and what happened? Nothing, right? So, I mean, so it is maybe not very interesting, but you will see it is good to have it for just for completion of our theory. It is good to have empty set as a possible event. Uh, you can have an event as heads. Now, that is an interesting event, isn't it? So, you, you toss a coin, uh, the sample space contains all outcomes, your event, one of the events is only heads, right. So, so I am interested in that, okay. So, I want to know what hap what this event that it is an head is interesting to me, right. So, you you you're going out for a cricket match, somebody is tossing and you have called heads, you are really interested in that event that whether it is heads or not, is not it. So, likewise you have tails. And then you have the final event which is equal to the sample space itself, it is just heads comma tails, okay. Once again maybe a dull sort of event which uh, you know maybe it is not so interesting, but uh, those are the four events, okay. So, now let us uh, move on to a slightly more complicated example which is throwing a die. Now, the sample space has six different outcomes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, you can now start writing out events, okay. So, now you may or may not know this result, but if you have a set with six objects, six elements, how many subsets do you have, okay. So, it turns out the answer is 2 power 6, okay. So, it is true for general any finite set. If you have uh, so many elements in a set, finite number of elements in a set, uh, the number of subsets that it has is 2 power uh, 
the number of elements. So very quick way to understand that is uh, just imagine you are constructing a subset, you go one element at a time and you have two choices for every element. You either put it into your subset or you do not put it into your subset, right. So 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2, 2 power size of the uh, set that gives you the number of subsets you can possibly pick from the set, okay. So you can write it down. So you see uh, the empty set is again <laughs> item of interest. You did not pick anything as you went through. Uh, but interesting events, you see, no, notice the first six events, so those are very interesting, right. So those are uh, one of those things. Uh, that could happen, you know, 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. So, those events seem uh, interesting. So, now you are already picking up the notion of what is this event, right? So, so event is a collection of outcomes of the experiment, isn't it? So, it is a subset of the sample space. A sample space contains outcomes. So, any event has a collection of outcomes. So, you can always think of when an experiment is done, whether an event occurred or not. Right. So, that is a question that you will see people keep asking again and again in the next slide we will see more details. So, so think of that when you write down an event. Event is not just a dull set or a subset. It is uh, something that is of interest, you know, it, it contains outcomes from the experiment and outcomes that are of interest to you. So, that you, you want to think about those outcomes, you want to see if there are any patterns in uh, the problem, the chance of that outcome appearing, etc., etc., okay. So, uh, so, so when you throw a die sometimes, you know, you know maybe you are playing, a, I mean my kids play the snakes and ladders a lot, right. So, so you get up to 90 or something, if, if you throw a die, uh, if it is 2 or 6, you are dead, right. A big snake is going to bite you when you come down all the way, uh, but any other number is okay. So, so at that point when you throw a die, you are interested in that event, right. Uh, not because you like it, but because you do not want it, okay. So, 2 comma 6 is an uh, event that is of interest to you. So, so quite often in situations, uh, you are interested in genuinely subsets of the outcomes, not just one particular outcome, but this one particular outcome is also very important. Uh, these uh, give you a simple way to understand the, uh, the what is going to happen at the, as a result of the experiment. But subsets of the outcomes are interesting in uh, different ways. So, so how many possible subsets you can have, you can have 64 possible uh, subsets, you can just write them down, you get all these events, okay. So notice the third point I put down there, uh, there are quite often many events you can describe in words in English, right. So you do not have to mathematically put down the subset, you can describe that in English using words and uh, it implies a certain precise subset. So, for instance, when you throw a die, I might say, I am interested in the event that I get an even number, okay. So, that is an event, right. So, I have said something in English, how does it become an event? Because getting an even number means that I am interested in the outcome 2 comma 4 comma 6 in the set of outcomes 2 comma 4 comma 6. That is clearly a subset of the sample space and that becomes an event, okay. So, any anything like that uh, is also important, okay. So, here is another event I put down getting a multiple of 3 could be an event, okay. In that case, it is just 3 comma 6 when you throw a die. When you throw 2 dies, then if you are looking at the total that you get from the 2 dies, then these things can become more interesting. But 1 die, uh, it is a little bit more simple. Uh, maybe you are interested in the event of getting an even number or getting a prime number, okay. So, all these can be uh, interesting events that you can describe in words but it actually corresponds to a uh, actual subset of the sample space, okay. So, look at the third uh, uh, experiment uh, here. It is it's an experiment that happens every day in Chennai, for instance. There is a uh, ocean, I mean sea nearby, fishermen go out into the sea to fish. Uh, so, that could be an experiment, okay. So, fishermen goes out to fish, let us say maybe you are imagining a small boat. These days people have big powerful boats, but anyway small boats, throw the net out and wait and then some catch and pull a bunch of fish come in. So, what is the sample space? Uh, depending on your culinary interest, uh, you may or may not be interested in the sample space. Uh, but writing down the sample space, I am sure you will agree is a bit complicated, right. There is quite a lot of fish in the sea and you have to describe uh, everything and uh, not just that, you, you, you I mean what, what is the fisherman interested in? He wants to know how many kilos of say pomfret that he has caught, right. So, that is that is very important to him because you know he may be getting a lot of money for pomfret, okay. So, so it is it is the catch of the fisherman when he goes out to sea is a complicated sample space. It is something 
that is statistically very interesting to study. It, it makes a uh, difference to the economics and uh, to the taste buds of the people and depending on uh, let's get whether you eat fish or you like fish or not, it is something interesting to you. Uh, so, but the sample space itself is a bit complicated to write down, but quite often you can define events without worrying so much so about the sample space, right. So, for instance, an event which could be of very good interest to the fisherman is, is the catch more than 100 kilos. So, if he catches more than 100 kilos of fish, maybe he makes a lot of money and uh, not only that, he may be interested in specific type of fish. In Chennai, for instance, there is something called the seer fish, which is very popular. So, did I catch seer fish? How much of seer fish did I catch? So, it can make a difference to uh, the fishermen. So, uh, so, while the sample space has not even been written out, right, and writing it out might be a complicated exercise and uh, etc., etc., I can define events and I can define events of interest, okay. Uh, so, this notion will come back to us again and again and again. So, quite often, uh, somebody will describe an experiment and uh, they will describe an event and want us to estimate or compute or precisely write down the chance of that event, okay. Uh, so, this is a very typical statistical study and in those cases, you do not typically always have to write down the entire sample space, particularly if it is very complicated. You may be interested only in some particular aspect of it and that you can get away with uh, directly without writing the sample space, okay. So, hopefully this gave you a very basic idea of what an event is subset of the sample space, event is subset of the sample space, event is subset of the sample space, okay. So, let us see a few more examples. In the next few uh, slides, I am going to show you a few more examples of events and how to think of them and I want to emphasize once again, events are really, really, really very, very important in probability theory. You have to have ultimate comfort with dealing with events, you know, working with them, doing things with them, manipulating them, understanding them, etc., etc., okay. So, let us go ahead and see uh, examples uh, in the next few slides. So, uh, like I mentioned uh, just a little while ago, events are central objects in probability theory. So, they are uh, very, very important and uh, I have already mentioned this. So, event is a subset of a uh, set of outcomes, right, a subset of the sample space. So, if one, if the actual outcome of the experiment, you did the experiment and if the actual outcome belongs to the event, I can say that, right, a set, when you have a set, you can say whether or not an element belongs to that uh, uh, set, right. So, my event is a set, it is a set of outcomes. The experiment produces an outcome. I can legitimately ask whether or not this outcome belongs to the event, right. Does it belong to the subset? If indeed it belongs, then that event is said to have occurred, okay. So, this I think I sort of hinted at even while I defined the event, uh, but this is, uh, this is a very important uh, notion in uh, probability theory. So, we say events occur when the outcome belongs to the event okay, the subset which, uh, which is the event, okay. So, uh, once again I want to remind you events are just sets, okay. Whatever you can do with sets, you can do with events also, okay. And uh, interestingly, because we are talking about uh, experiment that we are studying statistically, many set theoretic operation, operations, what you do in set theory with events as sets have a corresponding physical or in physical meaning as to what actually happens in the experiment and what, how the event uh, changes based on the operations that you do to the sets, okay. So, I am going to start looking at examples like that and then uh, illustrating it, talking about it in more detail, etc., okay. So, the first notion when you think of sets is uh, containment, okay. You can have one set being a subset of another set, okay. A can be subset equal to B as in every element of A is also in B, okay. A is a subset, B is a subset. Every element of A is also in B, okay. So, in that case you say A is subset equal to B, okay. Uh, 